Hey, what's going on, everybody? It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and, well, it's been another rough week for people living in Savannah, and I say that because we lost some really good individuals, and before I start off everything else, there was a accident Saturday afternoon on River Street when there was a, a ramp attached to a ferry that collapsed and sent dozens of people into the Savannah River. Now, it was reported that more than six, over like at least 60 people either fell into the water or got stuck on the ramp. But at least 30 people were injured during this incident. Uh, now, initially, 13 people were taken to the hospital initially when that happened. And the other 17 people went to the hospital a little bit later on uh, due to their injuries. And due to this falling down, a rescue followed and they got the people out the ramp and everybody had minor injuries except for firefighter Michael Curry who died. Now Michael Curry he was a technical rescue operator with the Savannah Fire Department and this loss comes really heavy for everyone in the fire department and he died shortly after the rescue from a medical uh, medical condition. They're not saying what type of medical condition it was but what I can say about it is uh, it probably maybe was hypothermia I mean the Savannah River is cold right about now it's November going on into December so that river is getting cold so I mean they're not saying what medical condition he died from but uh, he is a hero man he really is he put his life on the line to save everyone that was injured or everybody that was in the water and it's just it's a sad loss now curry he was with savannah fire for 13 years and actually he was helping people stranded on a floating piece of the platform when he collapsed said the savannah fire chief charles middleton um, he was taken to memorial now they're setting up a memorial for him on oglethorpe street right across from the savannah firefighter headquarters and his name will be added to the list to the memorial and he's the 24th Savannah firefighter to die in service and he leaves behind a eight-year-old son Cole Curry um, I'm gonna show you this picture of, of his son that put roses on his memorial and I mean it's just a really sad story I mean he really was a hero man um, I pay my respects to him man and I just want to say thank you to everyone who involved with taking those people out the the river I mean I couldn't have done that myself because I'm not I'm not courageous enough but these people who were involved were and rest in peace to Michael Curry and I hope his family heals during this process now in other tragic news we had an accident that occurred on Highway 17 near the Talmadge Bridge in South Carolina that's Jasper County around 4 a.m. Sunday and that accident took the life of Don Logana. Police say a blue pickup truck and a red four-door vehicle were involved with the crash. Now it's reported that Don was riding in the back seat of a 2009 Mitsubishi Gallant driven by another passenger, Eric Richter of Register, Georgia, and also Carolina Richter, also of Register was in the front passenger seat and Joshua Bridges of Savannah was beside Don in the back seat. The vehicle collided head on with a 2000 Dodge pickup truck driven by Cleveland Coleman of Savannah. Eric and Carolina and Joshua were taken to EMS 2 Memorial Med Medical Center in Savannah and Cleveland, he was taken to Memorial in a private vehicle. Now Don Lagana, he is originally from Syracuse, New York, but he had his start in a career in his hometown where he started as an intern and rose to the ranks of producer and reporter. Uh, later he moved to Watertown, New York and became a reporter and anchor for WWTI-TV. And also at WWTI-TV in Watertown, New York, he was the 11 p.m. anchor and filed reports for his investigative franchise, North Country Exposed. Now he came from there to WTOC in January 2004 where he was the weekday morning anchor for WTOC's The News at Daybreak and 
man, he has over 12 years of experience covering news in Savannah and Hilton Head areas. Uh, he has received multiple awards and honors, uh, honors such as from the Georgia Associated Press, the New York Associated Press, and New York State Broadcasters Association. And he also was voted Best Local News Anchor of 2016 by Connect Savannah. And WTOC is really sad behind this. I got a chance to talk to Marla Worker. I really, well, I just really said I'm really was sorry for your loss. I mean, I really didn't know Don as a person, but he really seemed like a a good guy. And what Marla had responded to me, she said, thank you so much. Don was a good friend. It has been so hard getting through the day. I'm sure tomorrow morning and the, the days to come will be much harder. But I really appreciate your kind words. He was such a unique and kind-hearted person. Uh, I couldn't even respond after that, man. I, I, I really didn't even know what else to say to her uh, besides I'm sorry. I mean, he, I mean, he really seemed like a really good dude. And I really like his stories, man. Um, I'm going to put the actual video of like the craziest news report that he ever reported on, man. It's, it was like really crazy. I'm going to try to put that to you at the end, man. But this is, we lost a lot of good people this year, man. Uh, we lost Ronald Leon Murray Jr. That was a specialist, as I reported a week ago. Now we lost two more important individuals. Um, you know, both, one was a hero. One was a, uh, a news reporter that reported on things that's going on in Savannah. And this is a, a tragic loss for everybody. Now, they also were saying that he wasn't wearing a seatbelt at the time and he was killed instantly at the scene. And something else that I want to say about the Talmadge Bridge, uh, Talmadge Bridge, for you guys that's not in Savannah, Talmadge Bridge connects Savannah to South Carolina. That's like one of three ways you can get to South Carolina from Savannah. Now, I know a lot of people that don't want to drive over the Talmadge Bridge. And I'm not just talking about females. I'm talking about guys, too. There's a lot of people that's really afraid of that Talmadge Bridge because it's a really, that's like a really high bridge. And accidents do happen on Talmadge Bridge. I mean, I believe there was an accident, a fatal accident, maybe about a month ago that I was going to report, but I decided not to. But... A lot of people are really afraid of that bridge because it's a really high bridge. I mean, I drove on it once. I mean, I'm not afraid of it myself, but I had I drove with somebody that was in the passenger seat with me, and he was tripping out. You know, I mean, there's a lot of people that's just really afraid, even though there's uh, guardrails and and safety railings all across of it. There's people that's just really afraid, just even approaching it. Um, the way I approach South Carolina, I, I take 204. Uh, sometimes I take 95 to, to get up there. So all I can say is, man, you can really die at any time in life. Um, that's why I, I say, you know, just you got to get ready. You know, you you got to be prepared. You know, you got to pray to your God, whoever your God is. I know I'm pretty sure everybody don't believe in the same religion, the people that watch my youtube channel probably everybody believes in a different religion and that's cool but you just got to pray to the ultimate power and because any day you can be gone from here and you want to get right with god or with your god or your ultimate power and i just send my condolences to the lagana family the wtoc family also the family of the firefighter the Curry family, and also to the family of the Army Specialist, Ronald Murray Jr., that died just a week ago. I just want to send my condolences to all those families. But that's all I really have for right now. It's Pac-Man Jones with Savannah Seaport News, and I'm going to show you the craziest clip of Don Lagana ever reported on Savannah, period. Hopefully you guys enjoy. I'm out is arrested for throwing boric acid and her neighbors in what police call a hate crime. Tonight, 
her side of the story. Don Lagana caught up with the woman in a WTOC exclusive interview. So, Don, what did she have to say? She says she didn't do it, and she even wore a T-shirt saying she didn't do it. But police say she did. I have the police report. It's right here. And as you're about to witness, her version of what happened is, let's just say, different than police. No, I did not throw anything. Wednesday afternoon, Brenda Hughes received a visit from Savannah Chatham Police. I was snatched back. My hands were cuffed and you're under arrest. I said, for what? What have I done? Brenda called police Wednesday when she claimed her neighbor, Kirk Patterson, made threats against her. He's hollering, screaming, and acting like the wild man that I've... I mean, just feel like a rabbit dog or something. I'm going to kill you, you... Mm, I'm not going to say what he said. A second call came in from Patterson claiming Brenda threw a white powdery substance on him and his son. It was a PIC roach killer made from boric acid. The it's, police said they saw white powder on them. I, well, he must have took it up off the ground because I don't know how he got it on him. Because I was in my house and my son said they were down here doing you something. You didn't throw it on No, them? I did not. As God is my witness, may he strike me dead. No. The police report says Brenda made several racist remarks. The Pattersons are African American. No, I did not. Explain this right here. But outside her home, which is decorated with colorful ornaments and language, her trash bag had the words black male scrawled across it. The police say Brenda stated she used the acid to kill roaches and trash as she pointed to her neighbor's home. Oh, this says trash and then it has black trash. male on there. Okay. It's shrubs. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. It's okay. Oh. Is that trash? Yeah, yeah, it's trash. Okay, thank you. But Brenda wasn't done proving points as she showed us the boric acid on the lawn. This is, this is supposedly what got him. Oh, no, oh, my God, no. Did you just put that in your mouth? Yes, I did. Why? Because I want to make a point. A point of what? That he's a liar. But you shouldn't be ingesting that. Why not? It's not going to do anything but make me sick. I think the label says it can make you sick. Well, let's see. Then we move to an acid-covered windowsill. So that's... No, no, no. Why are you doing... Yeah, I want to do it. Just, you know, make sure that... Why are you doing because that? Because I want to prove a point. Okay, but that's not healthy. I, it doesn't bother me. It says environmental safe on the label. Okay, um... Brenda blames everything on her neighbors, who she says continue to torment her. I tried contacting the Pattersons, but they were not home. Brenda has a message for them. I don't care. Just leave me alone. Fine. This is my home. And I now, Brenda has been charged with two counts of battery of a high and aggravated nature because police say this is a hate crime which caused physical harm. She also faces one count of disorderly conduct for her violent and tumultuous manner. Police say the father and son were treated and released from Memorial Health, but Brenda says she is not going to move. So now we got to have to kind of monitor the situation. She's called police several times in the yeah. past, so they're, they're familiar with this situation. A volatile neighbor situation, but we want to remind people not to do that. Don't, at, don't put that, that stuff on your skin, oh, in yeah. your mouth, anything. That, yeah, not All good. Right. Thanks a lot. All right. <laughs>